The General Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Thein Sein, President of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. In nombre de la On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Thein Sin, President of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Madam President, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished delegates. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate you on your well-deserved election as the President of the 67th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your countries, Serbia and Myanmar, have traditionally enjoyed a close friendship and cooperation. Under your able leadership, the General Assembly will make deliberations on measures to address the challenges being faced by the world today. I am confident that your vast wisdom, rich experience, and high diplomatic skills will guide our deliberations to produce the desired outcome. I would also like to take this opportunity to extend our sincere thanks and appreciation to your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Nasir Abdulaziz Al Nasser, for his outstanding leadership at the 66th session. Madam President, Myanmar consistently pursues an independent and active foreign policy. One of the basic tenets of our foreign policy is to actively contribute towards the maintenance of international peace and security. In so doing, we encourage efforts to settle differences among, among nations by peaceful and amicable means. This position of ours is consistent with the essence of one of the high-level themes of the current session, namely the settlement of disputes by peaceful coordination or means. Madam President, there exist differing views and assessments of the outcome of the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, Rio Plus 20, held in Brazil in June this year. A number of important decisions were taken on various issues, such as the renewing of commitments, the linkage of sustainable development to the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, the renewable energy and the establishment of arrangements for better coordination on sustainable development. It is necessary for member states to turn these decisions into action in order to leave a legacy of a safe and sustainable environment to our future generations. Madam President, since becoming a member, Myanmar has always adhered to the founding principles of the United Nations. Our participation in the General Assembly here in New York amply demonstrates our commitment to active participation in and cooperation with the work of the organization. The world today is replete with new challenges and opportunities. Urbanization and industrialization are taking place in developing countries on an unprecedented scale. The rapid progress in information technology is giving the impression that our world is getting smaller. On the other hand, the natural environment and climate are encountering new threats and challenges. In short, the world is changing as never before. In addition, 
It is also timely and appropriate to devote attention to issue, is, issues such as the post-2015 development agenda and the rule of law during the current session. Madam President, Myanmar is making progress on her democratic path, but this has not been an easy task. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to share our experience in this regard. In the ongoing reform process, we are facing challenges as well as opportunities. Within a short time, the people of Myanmar have been able to bring about amazing changes. I feel greatly privileged and honored to dutifully serve the people as their president at this crucial time in the history of our nation. I truly take my people as my own parents and elders. After taking office about 18 months ago, the parliament, the judiciary, the armed forces, the national races, political parties, civil societies, and the people at large have been taking tangible, irreversible steps in the democratic transition and reform process. Leaving behind a system of authoritarian government wherein the administrative, legislative, and judicial powers were centralized, we have now been able to put in place a democratic government and a strong, viable parliament following a practice of checks and balances. Despite the challenges, we can now witness encouraging progress and significant developments in our country. They include granting of amnesties to prisoners, the return with dignity of exiled political forces, the successful convening of 2012 by-elections in a free, fair, and transparent manner, the abolition of censorship of media, the fourth estate, freedom of internet access, the establishment of workers and employers organizations, and the increased participation of the people in the political process. At the current stage of the political process, we can witness the emergence of democratic characteristics such as growing participation of different political forces and their mutual tolerance. The magnanimity, the expansion of the scope of political participation, representation, and accountability. Our, our government and other stakeholders have now been able to foster a new political culture of patience and dialogue. Madam President, the former main opposition leader, Nobel Laureate Daung San Suu Kyi, is now participating in Parliament, not only in her capacity as a member of Parliament, but also as chairperson of the Rule of Law and Stability Committee of Parliament. This week, she is also in New York. As a Myanmar citizen, I would like to congratulate her on the honors she has received in this country in recognition of her efforts on behalf of democracy. The political progress in our country is enhancing its political legitimacy. This in turn facilitates the creation of basic, basic political stability, thereby paving the way for the economic and social transformation necessary for better living standards of the people. Madam President, the legislative body has also been progressing well and functioning more effectively at each session, and the Parliament has now been able to adopt landmark laws through democratic practices. Laws and bylaws are being promulgated, bearing in mind that, the, that economic development must not lead to widening the gap between rich and poor. Citizens' rights must be protected. The natural environment must be preserved. Our workers should enjoy rights in line with intellectual standards. We are giving... We are giving careful consideration to investments in the extractive sectors in the field of energy, for example, to ensure transparency and impartiality. Madam President, 
We believe that the cessation of all armed conflicts is a prerequisite for the building of genuine democracy. As such, we place high priority on achieving lasting peace in the country. In accordance with our motto, from war to peace, we are working hard to put an end to the long-standing difficulties in the regions of our ethnic nationalities. We have so far achieved ceasefire agreements with 10 armed groups. While further strengthening confidence-building measures, we will continue the peace talks. National-level peace negotiations will then continue towards a final peace agreement that would completely end the armed hostilities. In order to redress the situation in the northern part of Myanmar, the leaders of the Government Peace Work Committee and the Kachin, Kachin armed group are holding informal consultations and working to further strengthen the confidence-building measures. We consider any loss of life and property on either side in the armed conflict as a loss for the country. Madam President, while the government is resolutely pursuing political, social, and economic reforms, some unfortunate and unexpected issues have arisen. In a case in point, a case in point is the recent communal violence in Rakhine State. In this connection, I would like to mention in the first place that the people inhabiting our country, regardless of race, religion, and gender, have the right to live in peace and security. As you are aware, a national level independent investigation commission has been established to investigate this issue. To, to ensure impartiality, the composition of the commission is made up of representatives from all strata of society, including the widely respected personalities from the Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, and Hindu faiths. Upon completion of its task, the Commission will be submitting its findings and recommendations to me. Demonstrating our determination to resolve the issue in a transparent manner, we have facilitated field visits to the Rakhine State by the representatives of the OIC, ASEAN, UN agencies, the United States, and resident foreign diplomats in Myanmar. When it comes to relief assistance, access is being facilitated to those organizations which are willing to provide assistance to both the communities without discrimination. The issue at hand cannot be solved overnight. It will be resolved by taking short-term and long-term measures through a multifaceted approach, taking into account political, economic, and social aspects. I sincerely believe that as an independent and sovereign state, Myanmar has done the right thing to secure our borders and also to safeguard and protect our sovereignty. We will do our utmost to solve this issue in accordance with international norms. Madam President, I'm well aware of the fact that Myanmar's democratic transformation process would be a complex and delicate one that requires patience. To complete this process, we certainly need the understanding and support of the United Nations and its member states, the international community as a whole, and last but not least, the people of Myanmar. At the same time, it is equally important that Myanmar should be viewed from a different and new perspective. It is also necessary for us to be able to work in a more conducive and favorable environment than ever before. Madam President, Myanmar is now ushering in a new era. As a member of the family of nations, Myanmar will be participating more actively in the activities of the United Nations in various fields. Standing as a responsible and respectable nation on the world stage, we will take the challenges of the 21st century in a bold and resolute manner. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on his re-election and on his achievements thus far. Madam President, before concluding, allow me to mention briefly an important figure. 
It is none other than Uthant, a brilliant son of Myanmar, who served as the third Secretary General of the United Nations. Even during his days, Uthant had a vision of one world. He envisioned a global society that is guided by a spirit of one world, a world safe for diversity, a place of peaceful coexistence where global citizens practice the virtues of tolerance, cooperation, understanding, and compassion. We believe that if we make his vision a reality, we will speedily achieve a world which is more peaceful and prosperous. Uthant's tireless endeavors for peace and his achievements during his tenure as Secretary General of the United Nations will never be forgotten. The people of Myanmar will always take pride in and remember him as a great son of Myanmar. Thank you. General,